Hello again, everybody. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are taking a slight detour from our study of large digit multiplication to talk metric systems, specifically measuring liquids in metric units. We're in our math journal on pages 114 and 115, so let's dive right in. So at the top of the page, it says complete the tables, and in the top of the first table, it tells us that one liter is equivalent to a thousand milliliters, okay? Those are our two units of measure that we need to keep track of. So for every one liter, that's equivalent of 1,000 milliliters. And to the left of this table, we have a handy measurement guide, which also shows us that one liter is the equivalent of a thousand milliliters. So if I were to use this as like a uh, rain gauge or a uh, bar graph, I could fill in these groups of 200 milliliters or two, two, uh, groups of two tenths of a liter to show you that one liter is the equivalent of a thousand milliliters. So it's just a, another way of looking at the same amount. Okay, so Let's take a look at this table. Inputs and outputs. So if I know that there are three uh, liters, I want to know how many milliliters that's equivalent to. Well, hey, we didn't get away from multiplication after all, did we? Because in order to solve this problem, all I have to do is multiply three times the number of milliliters in one liter. That's 1,000. To get my product, which is 3,000. There are 3,000 milliliters. So thinking in reverse, if I have 5,000 milliliters, that's the equivalent of what? Well, what times 1,000 gives me 5,000? Well, that would be 5. 5 times 1,000 equals 5,000. Or 5 times 1 with 1, 2, 3 zeros is going to give me 5 with 1, 2, 3 zeros. Just like that easy enough when we're dealing with whole groups of liters, but now we're getting into some fractional amounts. For example, 1.5 liters, or 1 in 5 tenths of a liter, is the equivalent of 1,500 milliliters. Let's look at that at the measurement scale. Okay, so again, I, I have my measurement scale broken up into groups of 200 milliliters or two tenths of a liter, okay? 1,500 milliliters or one and a half liters would fall right about here. So if I were to mark up and fill in the amounts like so, I would have one and a half liters, or one and five tenths liters. Five tenths would be, of course, s bigger than one and four tenths, and smaller than one and six tenths. And it would be less than two whole liters. Okay, so it's a fractional amount. Sometimes I need to know the fractional amount. Okay, but what are we doing here? Really, all I'm doing is I'm multiplying the number on the left by 1,000, because there are 1,000 milliliters in every liter. But when I multiply a number like 4 and 4 tenths, or 4.4, when I multiply those two numbers together by 1,000, what am I really doing? Well, I'm taking that number, 4.4, or 4 and 4 tenths, and I'm moving decimal point over one, two, three places. Okay? I'll show you again. I'm taking that decimal point and I'm going to move it over uh, th three places. One, behind the four. Two, add a zero. Three, add another zero. And then right in my decimal point. Okay? So four and four tenths of a liter becomes 4,400 milliliters, okay? 
So all I did was I slide the decimal point over three places to the right when I multiply by a thousand. Let's look at another problem. Eight and eight tenths of a liter. Okay. So again, I'm just going to write that number down. Eight and eight tenths. Eight point eight. I'm going to move that decimal place over one, two, three places. So I'm going to have to add one, two zeros behind it. And then suddenly, eight and eight tenths of a liter becomes 8,800 milliliters. Okay? So if I can keep track of those decimal points, and remember that when I multiply by 1,000, I'm moving whatever my... Uh, whole number digits are three places over, um, I can convert fractional amounts with liters, okay? Number three asks you to shade in these uh, graduated cylinders to represent the number of liters and then find the milliliters equivalent, okay? So, for example, 3A says shade in two and two-tenths liters, so I could do that. I just take in my sh uh, highlighter app and just color it in all the way past the two liter mark right here. Okay. Not the best coloring job, but you get the idea. So two and two tenths of a liter is how many milliliters? Well, I know that for every liter I have 1,000 milliliters. So here's a group of 1,000, here's another group of 1,000, and then I've got a fractional amount, which is one hash mark past the two. Okay, And if you see that we've divided our liters by five sections, or five segments, each segment has to be a fifth of a 1,000, or a fifth of a liter, which would be 200. So then I just add all those amounts together. And that's going to give me 2,200 milliliters. Okay? 2,200 milliliters. Or basically, as I've demonstrated before, 2 and 2 tenths liters, just moving that decimal point over three places. Okay? Now, let's check out some of the story problems real quick on the second page. On page one, what is it, 115? Okay. Let's take a look at number two. It says a washing machine uses about 150 liters of water per load. If the Lopez family washes five loads of laundry per week, about how many milliliters of water do they use per week? All right. This looks like a job for da da da, da ruckus. I'm going to reread that problem. I'm going to underline the question, circle the important information, come up with an action plan, and then solve it. Okay, so washing machine uses about 150 liters water per load. That sounds important. If the Lopez family washes five loads of laundry per week, about how many milliliters of water do they use per week? Okay, so I've reread the question. I circled some important information. I underlined the question. What am I being asked to do here? That's my action plan. Well, we've just been studying multiplication and converting units, right? So there's actually two steps to this problem. First of all, I need to figure out how many liters of water they use in a week, the Lopez family. But then, sharp-eyed students will have noticed they want the answer in milliliters. Ah, so I'm going to have to then multiply that number by a thousand. Okay? So let's first break down the water usage per week. 150 liters times 5. 150 liters times 5. Well, what do you know? We are going to utilize some of our uh, multiplication skills here because 150 is a, 
as you know, a large digit number. So it said about, so I could create an estimate. Okay, I could round 150 to the nearest 100, which would round it up to 200, and then I could just multiply 200 times 5. But since we just learned about partitioning rectangles, let's break that down. Okay, 150 times 5. So I'm going to put 5 on the left, and then I'm going to break down 150 into its uh, individual parts. There is 100, and there is 5 tens, and there are no ones. So actually, we don't have to do anything with this box. So all I have to do here is multiply 5 times 100, and then 5 times 50. Well, 5 times 1, of course, is 5. And when I multiply 5 times 1 with two zeros, it's going to give me 5 with two zeros, 500. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the 50. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5 tens is going to give me 25 tens, otherwise known as 250. So now, what do I do? I'm going to take those two uh, partial products, 500, and then 250. I'm going to add them together. And that's going to give me 750. That's 750 liters per week. Liters per week. Now, i got to convert that answer into milliliters. So what do I do with that? I'm just going to multiply 750 liters times a thousand milliliters, or the number of milliliters in a liter. So 750 times a thousand. Well, when I multiply any number times a thousand, I'm just going to add one, two, three zeros behind it. So I just have to rewrite 750 and then add those one, two, three zeros. And what number is that? Well, that gives me 750 thousand milliliters. And that's our answer. 750,000. And that's it. Multiplication times a thousand. Just add three zeros behind uh, your product and you're good. Hey, if you have questions about liters and milliliters or multiplication or partitioning rectangles, talk to your math teacher. They will be happy to help you. Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks.